Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name's Brian. Uh, we talk about Blu-rays here, and boy, oh boy, there's a lot of sales happening right now. Um, I don't think I'm going to end up doing a new video for the Warner Archives sale, uh, but if you look in my my previously done videos, there will be one uh, I've done previous to that with some recommendations for that sale. I've dropped the indicator sale recommendations video, and um, I'm doing now a Kino Lorber March Madness sale video. And um, this sale is going on apparently through Monday, April 5th, 2021, and I believe uh, orders of $50 or more get free shipping. So if you're looking for stuff to fill out that 50, I've got a few suggestions here. I'll try and be brief about it uh, and see if any of these will be things that you might be interested in picking up. But um, let me get into this. Let's start with this one. This is The Train, John Frankenheimer's film. Uh, comes with a nice slip. Um, I've talked about this on the channel before, but... I can't talk about it enough because really it's one of my favorite films of all time. An incredible tale of uh, two incredibly strong-willed gentlemen battling each other. Uh, those being uh, the character Burt Lancaster plays and the character of this uh, Nazi uh, commander type dude. Um, basically, the Nazi guy wants to steal a whole bunch of paintings, French paintings, and... He wants to take them as the war is starting to maybe fizzle out. He puts them on a train and he is trying to get that train to where he needs it to go. Uh, I can't remember if it's um, loads them into the train bound for Berlin. So he wants to get them to Berlin. And then basically we have uh, a French patriot. Uh, no, he's not exactly that. Uh, Lancaster is a stalwart member of the resistance and he vows to stop the train at any cost. And it really is just the story of the lengths to which both these guys will go to get what they want. And it's just an incredible battle of wills and Lancaster is fantastic. It's got a great tension. This movie is 133 minutes long, but I feel like it's so well paced that you don't feel the length as much as you normally would in a movie that's over two hours. Uh, it's just, for me, basically a perfect movie. I just absolutely love it. Incredible ending. Just everything about it is wonderful. Um, this has a commentary from Frankenheimer. It has an additional commentary they recorded uh, with uh, filmmaker, historian Steve Mitchell and uh, Combat Films American Realism author Stephen J. Rubin. Uh, optional, uh, isolated score, etc. Um, this was released by Twilight Time. Uh, I think the commentary is all that this has that separates it. Uh, I don't know if the transfer is different. It's not indicated here, but regardless, this is a relatively inexpensive and even more so during the sale option for you to get the train and watch it and enjoy it because it's incredibly good. So that's my first recommendation. Next up, shift gears a little bit, The Wanderers. Uh, 1979 saw the release of two controversial gang films uh, in cinemas that I think caused some problems. I don't know if The Wanderers quite as much as The Warriors, which you know caused almost riots uh, in some theaters where it was released. Um, but The Wanderers is the other gang movie that came out in 1979, among others around this time. But this is one of my favorites. It is set in 1963, and it is about a gang in New York. Uh, are they in the Bronx? Um, yeah, in the Bronx. And Ken Wall is one of the leaders of the gang. Uh, John Friedrich is his buddy who lives in the same building as him, and they're friends. And it's just sort of a coming-of-age gang movie, like... These guys are getting near the end of high school and there's a lot of um, sort of uncertainty about where things are going with them. But uh, I don't want to talk about it too much. It's really a great movie to experience. Like I said, as a later coming of age type story as well as a you know wonderful snapshot of 
New York in 1963. It is done by uh, Philip Kaufman, who did uh, The Right Stuff and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And uh, my friend Jonathan Hertzberg was part of this. He now runs Fun City Editions. He was sort of part of this release. He helped uh, and was involved in a big way in getting a lot of the um, materials together to get this released. And I'm so happy he did because I know it's one of his favorite films and uh, it really came out great. This is a new 2K restoration of the film and it also includes the, um, I want to say it includes two cuts. Yeah, there's the preview cut and the theatrical cut included here. Um, it's got audio commentary from Philip Kaufman, audio commentary from Columbia University film professor Annette Insdorf, Back to the Bronx, Richard Price featurette, Wanderers Forever, a live Q&A at New York City's Film Forum with Karen Allen, Tony Callum, uh, Tony Ganios, and Richard Price. Uh, Karen Allen's in this movie, by the way, pre-Raiders of the Lost Ark, and she is fantastic and gorgeous and just absolutely breathtaking and just really a great character that I totally get hooked on every time I see the movie. Um, audio of a Q and A of at New York City's Film Forum with Phil Kaufman and Richard Price. Introduction by Karen Allen, Tony Callum, and Tony Ganos, uh, Ganios, uh, and the original theatrical trailers and TV spots as well. So it's really packed, nice Criterion level special edition, and it is part of the sale. I've gone through the entire sale, and this is what I pulled out. You know, I'm not saying that there isn't other worthwhile stuff in there, but these are just a few that I can recommend. And this is high, high on my list. The Wanderers, great cult film, recommended in Danny Perry's cult movies books. I love this movie. I'm, I'm going way too slow here. Let's pick it up a bit. Lifeboat. Hitchcock's film Lifeboat. I think one of his underappreciated gems. Uh, really one of those single location movies that totally pulls it off. And it's, you know, a bunch of people in a large lifeboat and the drama that is playing out on the boat and that has to do with sort of some class stuff and, and other things that are at play with this group of characters. But it's really great, really great movie. And for those that haven't seen it, if you're a Hitchcock fan, definitely pick it up during the sale. It also has a Tim Lucas commentary, which, as you know, I'm a huge fan of him and his commentary tracks, and his track on this is particularly enjoyable. Uh, it also has uh, interviews with sort of excerpts from the Hitchcock Truffaut interviews that were done for the Hitchcock Truffaut book that Truffaut did uh, a while back, a long time ago. Um, but you have the audio excerpts where he's talking about, he's asking about uh, Lifeboat, and that's great. And then there's also another audio commentary by film professor Drew Casper, which is also good, and The Making of Lifeboat. Again, a really stacked special edition release from Kino that I think is underrated as a movie and as a Blu-ray. Like, I just think this Blu-ray is, is, should, should have been more touted than it, than it was in terms of the collectors uh, I know. Everybody should have this. It's great. Okay. So this is a <clears throat> Scorpion title, but it is part of the sale fantastic uh, sort of gothic edged horror movie um, about a guy working at a university wherein he realizes that something strange is happening and maybe somebody's trying to curse him and his wife notices that and she has sort of her own roots in the occult and witchhood and she sort of starts to try and fight back in her own way. And he's very anti that. He's a sort of a, a very much a skeptic in terms of, you know, uh, the supernatural. But it's very much, uh, it's written by um, a screenplay by Richard Matheson and Charles Beaumont. And, you know, they are two of the biggest Twilight Zone writers. Um, I'm a huge fan of both. Matheson being one of my favorite authors of all time. And they collaborated on this idea. So it is that kind of a great Twilight Zone team-up of a movie. And um, really, really good. Uh, I know Elric Kane is a huge fan of this as well. And this Blu-ray looks nice. And there's a brand new interview with the star of the film, Peter Wingard, and audio, audio commentary with Richard Matheson, which is really cool to have. So uh, a great disc and on the list. Pick it up. Okay. 
little left turn there. Cabin Boy. <laughs> I love Cabin Boy. What can I say? Uh, this is a cult comedy that virtually destroyed the careers of Chris Elliott and director Adam Resnick at the time. Uh, I think it's a fascinating story of two guys who were trying to pitch an idea to Tim Burton, who at the time was super hot at the studio because of the Batman films. And so they pitched this idea that was, you know, one part Captain Courageous, which is an old um, story and film that I actually like, um, and one part like Harryhausen, Monsters, you know, the kind of stuff that Tim Burton would be into. And they had him on the hook to do it, and it looked like it was going to be a Tim Burton movie. And then he got busy with some other projects or something came up and he basically had to back out. And he's like, you guys got this, go ahead and make it. So this is not the movie they would have chose to make were, you know, had they their druthers and, you know, had studio backing with, you know, the kind of power that Tim Burton at the time had, which is basically, we'll do anything you want. Batman was such a huge hit and you're about to make Batman 2, Batman Returns, um, whatever you want, Tim, we'll do it. So he still left them with that sort of studio blessing, which is an incredible rarity to have a studio uh, allow a film like this to get made. It's a very weird comedy about a totally stuck up jerk, uh, fancy lad played by Chris Elliott, who is mistakenly dumped onto a fishing boat and ends up in the middle of, you know, the North Pole or the, you know, snowy Arctic waters where there's weird creatures and giants and a half shark man, you know, played by, um, <laughs> uh, oh God, who plays the shark man? Why can't I think of it? Um, I'll think Russ Tamblin for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's ridiculous and strange and I get that it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but it's just one of those movies that struck me, you know, when I saw it and has stayed with me and I just love that it's like a super nice, like slip cover edition, you know? Um, and it's actually got a ton of nice extras on it. You have a new audio commentary with Chris, with Chris Elliott and Adam Resnick, uh, with author Mike Sachs, new interview with Elliott and Resnick, limited edition booklet essay with film critic or by film critic, Nick Pinkerton, who's a favorite of mine for commentaries and essays, uh, archival cast interviews with Elliott, Richard Brinkley, James Gammon, Brian Doyle Murray, Brian James, Brian James is in this movie. That's great. Uh, Melora Walters and Russ Tamblin. Audition tapes from Melora Walters and Andy Richter. Uh, B-roll footage. Edited outtakes. Newly commissioned art. Um, it's just a really great edition of a movie that a lot of people would say don't doesn't deserve it. And I disagree, but you got to pick it up. If you're into weird cult comedies uh, and Chris Elliott, this is your jam. So uh, I also did a really fun episode of Just the Disc with my friend John Cribbs dealing with this movie, and I'd love you to listen to it. Like I said, the backstory is fascinating. And the fact that, you know, Andy Richter was working in a movie theater when the film came out and was very embarrassed about it. All this stuff. There's a lot of great stories in here uh, about this movie. Anyway, great stuff. Another horror comedy that I like, My Boyfriend's Back. This is directed by Bob Balaban, who did Parents, if you've seen that one which is much less of a comedy than this. Uh, but this is, I think, his follow-up to Parents, which is available on the Vestron video Blu-ray line. Um, basically about a high school kid who um, has a crush on the cutest girl in school and ends up dying to protect her and ends up coming back. You know, in his dying breath, he asks her out and she agrees and he dies and so she assumes she's not going to have to go through with it but he comes back from the dead and it's a zombie comedy and he wants to take her on the date that she promised and it's very funny uh sean s cunningham is a producer the cast includes um let's see here mary beth hurt cloris leachman austin pendleton uh i want oh, paul dooley's in this and uh it's it's, it's just a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of this one. Um, this has a commentary with Bob Balaban and actors Mary Beth Hurt and Austin Pendleton. Interview with star Andrew Lowry. Interview with director Bob Balaban. Interview with composer Harry Manfredini, who, of course, did the Friday the 13th scores. He does the music for this. And interview with actor Austin Pendleton as well. So another great little special edition that's part of the March Madness sale. Let's move faster. 
Okay, into some 60s movies here. Um, we have one of my favorites from 1965, A Thousand Clowns, a really delightful story of an unemployed uh, TV writer played by Jason Robards who lives with his nephew, I believe, um, whose parents have passed away. And he they have just sort of this freewheeling existence. Like he plays um, this guy, like I said, Murray Burns is his name. And he's unemployed. He's kind of happy being unemployed. He doesn't believe in the rat race. He thinks it is a soul-crushing venture and wants nothing to do with it. And even though his old producer is always trying to offer him ideas for new scripts, he keeps turning it down. And uh, at one point, the young boy accidentally outs to a teacher or someone uh, his living situation, and somebody calls social services. And so... Murray is forced to sort of audition for them as a parental role model. And he's not great in a textbook kind of way. Like he's not the guy you necessarily want to be, to have your kid, but he is really caring and nurturing, but just not in the sense that William Daniels and Barbara Harris, who are the social workers would want it to be. Um, So there's a great friction there and I won't go too much further, but it's a really delightful, wonderful film that I absolutely love. I think it's based on a play and just great stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, this has a an interview with actor Barry Gordon who plays the young kid in the movie. Okay. A uh, little Hal Ashby. We have The Landlord, Hal Ashby's debut film. Uh, this stars um, Bo Bridges as a rich kid who uh, is given the... Uh, property and apartment building that his rich parents own and he's going to go in and fix it up and make it his place I think not realizing that there's a bunch of people still living in that building it's in an African-American neighborhood and so the folks in the building are like nope we're not going we're not going anywhere and so then it becomes sort of a um, coming together of this guy and these people and there's an initial friction and it's it's very amusing and very of its time but a really, really great debut film, I think. Um, and Bo Bridges is very good. Uh, but you also have uh, Lee Grant as his mom and Lou Gossett Jr. in a very prominent role, and he's great. It's shot by Gordon Willis. Um, just a really, really good movie from 1970 that begins a great run of films that Hal Ashby had in the 70s. Um, so this one has a, uh, it's a an interview with Bo Bridges, uh, reflections from Lee Grant and Norman Jewison, Jewison and Hal Ashby style and substance an interview with Jewison talking about his relationship with Ashby who he worked with as an editor before sort of fostering him as a director um, and it's a really great relationship that they had so it's always wonderful to hear Jewison talk about his relationship with Ashby he's a big part of the Ashby documentary which I think is still on Amazon Prime and I highly recommend you check out if you haven't seen it Landlord boy I'm slow Okay, Mumford. This one is from 1999. It is directed by and written by Lawrence Kasdan. Uh, and it is a really great dramedy, uh, adult, you know, dramedy, the kind that they don't make anymore, a mid-budget type thing where you have a guy, sort of mysterious dude, moves to a small town called Mumford and he opens his own shingle as a therapist and starts bringing people in and he has a very unorthodox style to his therapy um and then it's so much that the other therapists in town begin to suspect like what's going on with this guy he's taking our business away what's happening but it's one of those almost frank capra-esque kind of portraits of a guy comes into a town and is immediately you know sort of bristled by a lot of the town folk uh, but eventually sort of starts to win them over, and yet there's a mystery behind him. I don't want to go too much further with it, because I really feel like this is a discovery movie, a movie that you watch and uh, it unfolds for you. Uh, I will lay down the cast, which is really great. Um, Lauren Dean plays the lead role, and it's one of those things where you watch it and you go, man, he was in some movies in the 90s, and um, he should have been more of a thing. He, he's just really great as the lead character in this. Um, I just love his manner. Uh, <clears throat> Hope Davis, who I adore, uh, Jason Lee, Mary McDonald, David Pamer, Martin Short, Pruitt Taylor Vince, and Alfred Woodard 
among others, uh, are in this film. Zoe Deschanel, Priscilla Barnes, Ted Danson. Um, it's just a really great ensemble. The kind you get when you're a guy like Lawrence Kazan, who's been a screenwriter and director in Hollywood for, at this point, you know, 20 years, uh, more than in 1999. Um, but I think this is one of his masterpieces, and I really do think it's underrated. It has an, This uh, disc has an interview with Kazan and a making of featurette, and uh, I was just excited that Kino put this out, and I feel like it flew under the radar, and it's part of the sale, so pick it up. All right. Diary of Mad Housewife, another one I've talked about on the channel. This is from Frank Perry, who did The Swimmer, uh, which I adore, and um, some other films that are also great, um, including Plays, Plays As It Lays, and oh gosh, there's a couple that are unavailable that you can't see. But anyway, uh, this one uh, stars Carrie Snodgrass in a remarkable performance, playing a put-upon housewife whose husband is, I think, a lawyer... Or is he in ads? I can't remember. But he's a total monster. He's played by Richard Benjamin. And she starts to have an affair with this writer played by Frank Langella. That story may not sound as interesting as this movie is, ultimately. But it's just really good. And another film that was lost to time because of availability. A lot of people hadn't seen it because it basically had no DVD release that I'm aware of. It was on VHS and then gone for years. And so I was so excited that it came out from Kino. I think... There may still be a indicator release coming. I feel like they teased it at one point, but I can't remember if they ever brought it out. I don't think they did yet. But anyway, uh, screenwriter Larry Karaszewski is a big Frank Perry fan. Oh, Last Summer. That's a movie that Larry loves and that I love and is another great unavailable Frank Perry movie. But Larry loves this movie. He does a commentary with Howard S. Berger and Steve Mitchell, and that's really good. And I forgot how good the ending of this movie is. It's a little bit of a reveal ending. And uh, it really put puts things in a different perspective. But a really great, underseen, underappreciated film from 1970. And a great performance by Carrie Snodgrass at the center. Check out Diary of a Mad Housewife. And then uh, I Walk Alone with Burt Lancaster, Elizabeth Scott, and Kirk Douglas. Uh, this is from a 4K scan of a 35mm safety dupe negative from Paramount. So it looks really good, uh, but an underseen noir, basically, uh, two partners, um, Lancaster and Kirk Douglas, split up to evade getting caught, and Frankie, the Lancaster character, is caught and put in jail, and um, he ends up sort of being a bit vengeful in terms of what he wants when he gets back. He kind of wants some some re recompense from the Kirk Douglas character and there's a great tension there and I don't again it's another one I don't want to over explain just a great noir story with a great cast and underappreciated should be talked about among the great noirs and it's not so I walk alone and then a complete left turn from that little Golan Globus Revenge of the Ninja the best of the ninja movies yes I like Ninja 3 I think it's crazy but in terms of actual ninja action and ridiculous gore and violence, Revenge of the Ninja is the way to go uh, from director Sam Furstenberg, who did American Ninja and a whole bunch of films for canon films. Uh, I think this one is underappreciated, uh, but very, very enjoyable. And I think people forgot it's even out on Blu-ray. has an audio commentary with Furstenberg and his stunt coordinator and an intro by him. Um, definitely worth your time if you're an, a Canon fan or a Ninja fan. <clears throat> okay. Now I've got what I'll call a speed round. I'll be faster with these, like real fast. Um, these are all on the list. The March Madness sale. So Trilogy of Terror. Again, Richard Matheson, Karen Black. A great uh, three-story film. Zuni fetish doll. That's all I got to say. Good stuff. The Night Strangler. Uh, the follow-up to The Night Stalker, which I don't think is part of the sale. If it is, pick it up, but I didn't see it. Uh, this is good. Not as good as Night Stalker, but The Strang Night Strangler um, also produced and uh, directed this time by Dan Curtis. Another screenplay by Richard Matheson. Very good, kind of echoing some of the stuff he does 
in the first film, which is actually based on another person's story. Um, but he does a great job of sort of doing some callbacks and self-awareness. Really good. Great TV movie. Um, has an audio commentary with Tim Lucas uh, and an interview with the composer and a directing the Night Strangler featurette. Good stuff. The Spiral Staircase. This is a great little gothic horror movie about a mad killer on the loose kind of thing. And uh, Elric Kane turned me on to this one. Really enjoyable if you're into that kind of stuff. Directed by Robert Sadmack and has an audio commentary with Imogen Sarah Smith, who is fantastic. Uh, recommended for uh, gothic horror fans. This is from 1946. Spinning off of that just slightly, um, Transylvania 6 5000 from 1985 with Jeff Bridges and Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff Goldblum and Ed Bagley Jr. Um, totally a different guy. Uh, and I do feel like these guys should have done more movies together because they are very fun in the vein of an Abbott and Costello kind of comic team, if not quite up to that level. Uh, two reporters, Central Transylvania, to investigate some weird footage that looks to prove maybe some monsters really exist. And do they? Don't they? I don't know. But uh, it also has Joe Bologna, uh, Carol Kane, Jeffrey Jones, Gina Davis, Michael Richards, and it's just very goofy. And I'm a fan of this one. I saw it on VHS when I was a kid, and it's stuck with me. This has a commentary with writer-director Rudy DeLuca and his visual cons consultant Steve Haberman. Snag it. Straight to Hell, Alex Cox's cult western hybrid. I know this isn't for everybody. Some people don't like this one. In fact, I didn't like it the first couple times I saw it. It has since grown on me. Uh, it shows just how much Alex Cox, director of Repo Man, uh, and Sid and Nancy loves spaghetti westerns and how much he wanted to put his own spin on it and he definitely does it's a very cult movie version of that so um, has a great cult cast Cy Richardson, uh, Cy Richardson Joe Strummer Dick Rude Courtney Love uh, also um, Dennis Hopper uh, Grace Jones Jim Jarmusch uh, just a really crazy comedy western thing uh it's really unique and it has a commentary by cox and dick rude and a making of and yeah just a really solid nice special edition like that kino put out like this is uh as good or better than any label would have treated this film so worth your time if you're in a cult cinema um highway to hell i think i've talked about this on the podcast just a really interesting you know, man, every man, every day kid goes to hell to save his girlfriend kind of story with the hell cop. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's got Chad Lowe and of course that is Christy Swanson there and, uh, really interesting. I, I'm a fan. It's, it's a little goofy in parts, but enjoyable. Uh, also has Richard Farnsworth. Okay. Um, I'm just about done. I'm going to really just be brief about this. So there's a, there's some cartoon sets in here. These are uh, the, I have the first, I have almost all the Pink Panther cartoon sets. So there's six volumes and they're all part of this sale. And this just goes through chronologically um, the first set starting in 1964 to 66. And the last set going 1978 to 1980 and you have all kinds of interesting uh, cartoons. Plus, you have uh, commentaries from folks like Jerry Beck uh, on some of the cartoons. And Jerry Beck is always wonderful, just like the Tim Lucas of cartoon commentaries. Like, just a guy who knows everything about cartoons. So, they're, they're involved, and there's other guys like him involved. These are great sets, and the, the um, transfers look nice. And along those lines is The Inspector, which is kind of a spin-off type thing of... The Pink Panther definitely has a little bit in common with Clouseau and, and stuff like that. But I really like The Inspector. Really great um, from the same producers as, as those Pink Panther cartoons from 1965 to 1969. Again, uh, you have Jerry Beck involved, uh, Greg, Greg Ford producing these documentaries about um, DePatty Freeling, which were a couple guys who spun off of Warner Brothers and other cartoon makers to do their own thing, and they did these cartoons. And anyway, some good cartoons in there is what I'm getting at. And so there's there's just a lot of stuff in this sale. This video is way longer than I intended it to be, but, you know, this sale goes on through April 5th. If there's anything in here that might help bump you up to $50 so you can get that free shipping, 
all the better, you know. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know if you like this kind of video. If you bought anything from the sale, let me know what you bought in the comments. I'm very curious because there's a lot of great titles in there and I know I can't cover everything. So um, definitely go to Kino Lorber and check out the Mar March Madness sale and see if there's anything there for you to check out and buy. <laughs> okay, talk to you guys later.